Prime Minister Narendra Modi unveiled the Bharat 6G vision statement on March 22nd, setting the target of launching the sixth generation of telecom services in India by 2030. On the same day, PM Modi also unveiled the official 6G testbed project. A consortium of Indian institutes of technology, including Guwahati and Madras, have come together for the testbed, which will provide an R&D platform to startups, researchers and industry. The 6th generation telecom network or 6G will provide internet speeds of up to 1 terabytes per second or 1 trillion bytes per second with ultra low latency. Meanwhile, the average speed range of the latest 5G technology lies between 40 to 1100 million bytes per second, potentially hitting maximum speeds of 10,000 Mbps. 6G will enable smooth machine to machine and machine to human interactions. It will boost the development of virtual and augmented reality. It will also make constantly communicating self-driving cars a reality. But if all of this doesn't interest you, 6G will reportedly be up to 100 times faster than 5G, allowing you to download over 140 hours of Netflix in a second. In the first phase of the 6G project, the center will provide support to explore new ideas and pathways, with the academia, industry and service providers coming together to identify priority areas for research. With government support, these ideas will then be used to develop use cases, intellectual properties, test beds and prototypes, which will be commercialized in the second phase. The Bharat 6G project is part of India's efforts to attain a toehold in the global supply chain for emerging technologies, such as satellite and terrestrial communication gear and components. India is also aiming to take part in global discussions that are currently underway on setting 6G standards. As part of this plan, India is pushing for a greater say in the ongoing policy making at the International Telecommunication Union. Clearly, a start has been made. A typical, <clears throat> typical generation uh, in telecom is about 10 years. Okay, The first uh, three or four years is about understanding what technology goes in doing the vision for that particular generation, followed by standardization and followed by making the equipment and deployment. Okay. This is a typical time penny. So now we're in the initial phase of things. So at this time, if we get into 6G, either through test beds, building test beds, or uh, through attending standardization activators, what happens is we would have a say in what is going to happen globally. And this is kind of important. It's important that we get in the beginning of the uh, cycle rather than at the end of the cycle. In this process, we're also going to generate IPR. Uh, IPR that may, that may go into the standards later on. Still, significant challenges will have to be overcome. According to a Nikkei and Cyber Creative Institute analysis of patent applications for nine core 6G technologies, as of August 2021, China topped the list with slightly more than 40% of patent filings. India did not even figure on the list back then. And while some progress has been made, with India currently holding over 120 global 6G tech patents, there's a long way to go. According to experts, countries with more patent filings have a bigger say in industry standards. India will have to prioritize generating new intellectual property and significantly up its game when it comes to clinching 6G patents if it hopes to compete with the likes of China. This will require greater coordination between the industry and academia along with government support than is presently the case. And experts business standards spoke to also highlighted two other significant challenges India will have to overcome to become a major 6G player. See, one that we really don't have is uh, fabrication, uh, chip fabrication. See, in 6G, when we go to higher frequencies and other things, you require specialized materials and specialized uh, processes uh, so that the chips operate at those high frequency RF and other things. So this is, the, I mean, uh, uh, so this is going to be one one bottleneck for India. So scale is, I think, everything. Scale is the most important part. And I personally visited uh, multiple times facilities in China. I have uh, seen facilities in Korea. Uh, what I find that uh, the kind of focus they have got on um, scaling youth uh, fr from all the elements. Like uh, we have done some uh, study research, even item like handset. There are maybe... Uh, Sub-component wise, 200 uh, plus areas where technology has to be developed. So if you really want to become a good manufacturer. Same way, I think all aspects, whether it is radios, whether it is uh, uh, BTS and uh, uh, all, all other network uh, components, everywhere there's a lot of research is required. And engineering students, you know, which are today studying, they're studying maybe still a dated um, uh, syllabus. 
the 6G mission's success will also call for coordination between the semiconductor and telecom equipment PLI schemes. Meanwhile, the government's report on the 6G mission has suggested expeditiously creating a corpus of 10,000 crore rupees for development and deployment. It has also argued for the use of the entire gamut of available funding instruments, such as grants, loans, VC funds and fund of funds. With the US, Japan, EU and China already having committed billions of dollars to 6G, progress on this front would be a good first step towards success. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.